Hello, my name's Andrew, and today we're doing a first impressions review of the Vivo Barefoot Gobi boot. So these are a lightweight boot for all season casual, and I've been really excited to make a review about them because last year, Vivo sent me these to test. These are the Gobi winterized version, and I use these more than anything else in the winter because they're just super light and flexible in both the sole and the upper, um, and then they've got this really nice insulation, very furry. Um, the one thing that I didn't like about them is that I couldn't keep using them in spring when it started to get warmer. So I was like really hoping that Vivo would come out with like an uninsulated version. And they did. That's exactly what the Gobi boot is. It's the same exact thing, but without the insulation. So yeah, um, we're going to talk about some testing that I've done so far with it, what it feels like. But first, let's just go over some of the basic features. Up front, you've got a wide toe box with multiple layers of reinforcement, which you also have in the back, which is nice for just some extra protection and durability. But also, it kind of helps with water resistance because you've got the wraparound sole here, and then you've got the second layer and then you've got the top layer of leather. And it's kind of a very shiny leather, as you can see. So like, I took them out for a walk um, this morning and there's a little bit of mud left there, but for the most part, you can just take like a damp towel and just wash them off really easily, which is kind of nice because they are a nice looking boot. And I find sometimes with Vivo's softer leathers, they kind of <laughs> grab onto mud a little bit and they're kind of annoying to clean. So yeah, I like that about the Gobies. Um, and it also has a stitch sole, which is great for extra durability um, all the way around. And then, just, you know, a little reinforcement in the heel where boots are a little bit more likely to tear out because your heel is moving up and down, especially when you slide into the boot. Um, and then looking at the laces, pretty standard flat laces, which look really cool. But then up at the top, you've got these two lace hooks. So you can easily take the boot on and off um, without having to go through lace loops, which is kind of nice. Inside the Gobi boot, you've got a little bit of a softer leather, which feels really nice. Um, and it's definitely thinner than the Gobi Winterize. So if you're wearing this into warmer temperatures, like I've been up to 70 degrees so far, and you can definitely do that with this boot. You can't do that with the Winterize version because it's just got too much insulation. Um, but yeah, also tongue, very minimal. And then the leather up here is fairly minimal. It's a little bit thicker, which is good because you want some water resistance. Um, if you're walking through, you know, muddy fields and stuff like that. For the sole, it's 3.7 millimeters, which is super, super thin. And it's got some really nice flexibility in all directions. You can even twist the whole boot like that. Taking a closer look at the tread, it's got this hexagonal pattern, which is just nice for giving you a little bit of extra grip on wet conditions. And then in terms of the temperature range for this boot, um, one thing that I like to do, Vivo does give you a cork insole, which is kind of nice if you just want a little extra padding. Cork is nice for temperature regulation, especially in hotter weather, but another type of insole I like to use if, it, if you're using the boots in colder weather is a wool felt insole like this because it's extremely flexible. Um, doesn't affect the ground feel of the shoe at all. So if you are wearing this boot, you know, when it's like 30 degrees outside, like it was this morning, you can add the wool felt insole in the bottom or Vivo's insole. Um, and then just stack a couple layers of socks to make it as warm as you want, which is the nice thing about an uninsulated boot, right? Because you can take one layer of socks, two layers of socks, or you could mix it with maybe like a lighter um, layer or a thicker smart wool. And then you can just kind of adjust the temperature to whatever you want. Um, which is nice. And then in the summer, if it starts to feel a little bit too hot, then you can shift down to something really thin like these. This is the Njinji liner, um, merino wool. So it's really breathable even in hot, hot temperatures. So that's the Vivo Barefoot Gobi boot, but let's talk about some other alternatives. So the most obvious one would be the Gobi winterized. And this is basically the same exact thing, except it has this really thick insulation. And you wouldn't know it, but this is actually a synthetic material. It looks like um, sheep wool, but it's not. It's just got this really um, puffy texture to it that is very deceiving. Normally, I don't like synthetic insulation because it's hot, it's sweaty, it doesn't breathe as well as wool does. But I think because they've made it so puffy and curly, um, it just acts exactly like wool. So yeah, I got some great breathability out of it. It was a super warm boot and you can get it down to like zero degrees if you do the same thing of putting, you know, the wool felt insole with um, a couple layers of Njinji. Another good option would be the Real Foot Farmer. And this is the winter because it's insulated, but they also have a farmer spring. So it's a little bit more versatile for all seasons like we were talking about with the Gobi boot. But this one has an extra wide toe box. It's just ridiculous. I've never seen a barefoot shoe like this before. So if you're someone who always feels like your shoes are too tight and you have extra wide feet, this would be a really good option. Um, it's again, it's got a super thin upper like the Gobi boot, 
Um, and then a four millimeter sole, so very similar feeling, um, extremely flexible. It's got a good tread for roads and for just some light trails. You know, again, you wouldn't want to take it on a super steep hill, but yeah, for, um, for gentle slopes and stuff like that. And I don't know, working out in the field, um, just walking around the city, it's great for that. I really like the laces on these and I have to show you the sound that these laces make when they pop into here because it's really addictive. I don't know why, but I just really like the sound. So um, yeah, that's the Real Foot Farmer. And moving on for another option, this is the Wildling North Wolf. And I think this is probably the most unique design I've ever seen from a barefoot shoe because it looks like wearing a herringbone suit. The upper is just so cool. It's um, wool on the inside and outside. So it's very warm, but it's also very thin. Like it's just got some absolutely ridiculous flexibility. It's like wearing nothing at all. And the toe box is kind of medium wide, I would say. And then in terms of the temperature range, you can get this up to like maybe 60 degrees. You know, it is insulated, but it is fairly light. So it breathes pretty well for medium temperatures. For a vegan option, this is the Ahenza Jaya. And I just love how tall this boot is because it looks like a combat boot, but it just has some ridiculous flexibility to it. And it also looks like leather, but it is completely vegan. So it's a good plant-based option. In terms of the toe box, it's got a wide toe box, a little bit wider than Wild Lane. Pretty comparable to Vivo Barefoot. It is kind of low. I would say this is a low volume shoe. So if you have high arches, this may not be the option for you. Um, they also have a zip version, which is pretty helpful because with a taller boot, it'd be kind of a pain to get into with um, all of those laces. Um, in terms of the sole, it's got a four millimeter sole, extremely flexible. Um, even though it's four, four millimeters, it actually feels more flexible than Vivo Barefoot sole at 3.7 millimeters, just because the rubber is a little bit, a little bit softer. So I would say I wouldn't take this one on gravel as much because it can be punctured um, a little bit easier than Vivo Barefoot or Real Foot um, or Wildling. They all have a little bit harder rubber, but I do like the soft feeling for walking on um, roads and stuff like that, you know, walking around a city all day long. Um, and then in terms of the temperature range, you know, you can probably get it up to like 50, 60 degrees before it starts to get too hot because it does have some minimal insulation, again, vegan. Um, which feels very soft, um, but you know, because it's thin, it doesn't get um, overheated too easily. And then for our last option, this is the Vivo Barefoot Scott. And this one's a little bit more like a work boot because it's got kind of a stiffer upper, um, even though it's still pretty light and flexible, um, but you can hear, the leather is a little bit more durable. It feels a little bit more protective than some of the other boots. Um, on the inside, it is slightly insulated, so it's got some insulation around the collar. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it there. Let's see if I can get it turned around. Um, yeah, there, you got some fur there. This is also a synthetic insulation, kind of like the Gobi Winterize that works really well. Um, and also some insulation under here, although you can't see it. Um, I really like the look of this boot. It's very minimal, very simple, utilitarian. It kind of looks classic, but also modern. Um, and uh, in terms of the sole, it's also got a four millimeter sole. So good amount of flexibility. The flexibility is limited just a little bit, just because of the fact that the upper is a little bit thicker, a little bit more protective, but it's got the same kind of hexagonal sole. Um, and in terms of the toe box, it's a fairly wide toe box. I think it gets a little bit more tapered towards the front um, compared to the Gobi, which is just a little bit wider and more squared off. But um, yeah, this is the Scott. Again, kind of a medium temperature range. You can get it probably all the way down to zero if you stack up some socks and insole, and then you could get it up to 50, 60 degrees um, with the minimal insulation in there. So those are some good options for higher cut barefoot boots, but if you wanna support the channel, you can use the code FULTY10 for 10% off Vivo Barefoot or FULTY15 in March of 2024 for 15% off. But you can also browse and filter more products at my website, barefootwear.org, or watch my zero drop transition video to learn more about barefooting. Finally, if you have a question about the Vivo Barefoot Gobi boot or about barefoot shoes in general, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.